The iPhone 14 Pro Max is here and it has come to challenge the current flagship of smartphones, the S22 Ultra from Samsung. Now this is a phone that is loved by a lot of reviewers, including ourselves, because obviously it looks very nice and it has great performance in all aspects, especially the cameras. But that is where Apple has come with some huge camera changes this year to challenge it. So in this video, I'm gonna compare everything between these two phones the speakers, the performance, the displays, the display quality, battery life, and much more. So let's get right into it. Now the nice thing about the S22 Ultra right now is that it is discounted and you can find it on Amazon right now for 1050. That's fully unlocked compared to the 14 Pro Max, which is $1,100 at least in the US. So they're very similarly priced. But the crazy thing is that you can even find the S22 Ultra refurbished as low as under $700. So that's a great deal if you have T-Mobile. Now as far as the finish, I went with the new Space Black for the 14 Pro Max, which honestly isn't that different compared to the previous Graphite, at least on the back glass. But I love how the new camera rings and the sides are just fully black. So I'm really liking that new design, especially the new design for the flash module. But looking over at the S22 Ultra, I love this new camera bump design that they implemented. It looks so much better than that previous chunky block that they had, especially since they have four cameras on the back. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But in terms of design, they both look great. Now in terms of comfort, they are a little bit different because the iPhone has these flat sides and the S22 Ultra kind of wraps around in a rounded design, which feels really comfy. However, the corners are just fully boxed off so that could kind of dig into your palm. But I do like how they have all of the buttons on one side, so you can see the volume right here, and the power button, which is lower on the S22 compared to a little bit higher on the iPhone. But one thing that really sucks for US iPhone users is that Apple got rid of the SIM slot, so that really sucks for people who are traveling and they can't easily switch out a physical SIM, compared to the S22 Ultra, which still has that SIM slot, and you can even put up to two SIM slots in some areas. Now as far as the thickness of both of these phones, the Samsung is actually a little bit thicker in terms of the body, the metal slab, but because the iPhones have massive camera bumps that stick out so much, it actually is thicker if you're looking at just the camera bumps. Now as far as battery life, the Samsung does have a larger battery, at least physically, but in terms of the actual battery life, the iPhone actually wins out because of the better software software optimization. But surprisingly, even though the iPhone has a smaller battery, it's actually heavier than the S22 Ultra. Now one thing that really disappoints me about the iPhone 14 Pro Max is that it still has a lightning port. No, they have not switched over to USB-C, which of course the S22 Ultra has. And not only that, but it's still lightning 2.0 with slower speeds, even though it has a 48 megapixel camera. Now before I get into all of the massive display differences, like the always on display that you see right here, I do wanna talk about my favorite MagSafe wallet of all time, which has a built-in stand and grip that that you can use in many different angles. Now this of course is our partner Moff's Snap-on Wallet and Stand, which comes in four different colors that perfectly match the new iPhone 14 Pro colors. Their purple wallet matches the new deep purple iPhone 14 Pro color. They've got the beach white wallet to match the gold iPhone 14 Pro. The misty cove wallet matches the silver model and the dark gray or black wallets match the space black on the iPhone 14 Pro. But if you wanna mix it up, Moff also has 15 colors to choose from. Now what I personally recommend is getting the Moft MagSafe case because the magnetic strength basically becomes two times stronger. It is incredibly strong, not only for the Moft wallet stand, but also for all of your other MagSafe accessories. And I also like how the white case kind of offsets the colors of the iPhone that you can see through the transparent window and the matching wallet. And Moft also has adhesive versions of the wallet for non MagSafe phones like the S22 Ultra. So check them out using the links in the description below. Now getting back to the always on displays, finally Apple has one after so many years of not having one. And that's because it runs at only one Hertz. That means every second 
The display refreshes just one time, which makes it very efficient. Now the S22 Ultra, unfortunately, there are reports that it only goes down to 24 Hertz, even in always on display mode, which is wasting battery life. And impressively, the always on display on the iPhone is really bright. Like some people complain that it's too bright. But the main difference is that you can actually see your wallpaper on the iPhone at all times. It just dims down and gets dark, but it keeps those colors. Whereas on the S22 Ultra, you just have an all black display. Now the iPhone is limited to just four customizable widgets, which you can also put the battery life indicator, just like the S22 Ultra has the battery life on the bottom, which is very convenient, as well as a long list of widgets. And I also like how they have the ultrasonic fingerprint logo right here, so you could just unlock it just like that. But something new with the iPhone this year is that you can swipe from the always on display to unlock it, which I'm very happy because you used to have to tap to wake it up and then swipe. So it's all in one motion, just like on the S22 Ultra. Now, personally, I love Face ID more than the ultrasonic scanner because it works kind of transparently and it is very secure in terms of facial recognition. And one thing I really love is that Apple implemented the Face ID into the new dynamic island. So whenever you unlock Face ID or authenticate, it all happens up there with the nice animation. Now on the flip side, the S22 Ultra has that tiny little camera hole, which is so clean and it definitely gets in the way a lot less than the iPhone does. And some people online have also been showing the dynamic island getting in the way of two by one video, which is so annoying. And I know that Apple said that they reduced the bezel size on the iPhone, but it's still just so much thicker than the really thin and nice bezels on the S22 Ultra. But I am happy that Apple significantly slimmed down the earpiece speaker so you can almost just barely notice it, just like it is on the S22 Ultra. And in terms of the actual display quality, the Samsung has a slightly larger display with higher PPI. And in terms of the peak brightness, indoors they're basically the same if you max them out. However, if you go outside, you can see that the iPhone's higher 2000 nits of peak brightness definitely help you see the display. Now this is very interesting. The iPhone's rated up to 1600 nits while watching HDR, but the S22 Ultra is actually brighter in this case. So I don't know what's going on, why it's not going up to the full 1600, but honestly, the S22 Ultra looks better for HDR video here. And in this case, with them side by side, I definitely notice a difference in the bezels being thinner on the S22 Ultra and that single hole punch camera barely intruding on the video compared to the dynamic island. So basically for watching video, the S22 Ultra is the winner, but what about the speaker quality? Because we just did our 14 Pro Max versus 13 Pro Max full comparison, which you should definitely watch if you haven't already, and we noticed that the speakers had a major improvement. So let's compare them to the S22 Ultra. Yes, it's the same song again. And wow, that was a crazy comparison because the S22 Ultra used to be better than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but this 14 just went crazy in terms of the sound quality and the volume. So it's louder. The separation of frequencies is much better in terms of the sound stage. So you could actually hear the high end kind of cut away from the mids, whereas the S22 Ultra kind of clashes everything together. It doesn't do a good job of separating the different instruments and sounds. And I also hear a lot more volume from the bottom speaker, whereas the iPhone is perfectly balanced between the earpiece and the bottom, so I'm so impressed with the iPhone this year. Now before I get into the performance testing, I do want to show off something that's totally unique to the S22 Ultra, something that the iPhone doesn't offer, and that is of course the S Pen, which is built into the S22 Ultra. I love that it's always there when you need it, and of course you can use it like a stylus for notes, signing documents, anything you want. Now getting into performance, the first test we're going to do is a Geekbench 5 CPU test, but first I've got to talk about the processor differences because the iPhone 14 Pro Max has the new A16 
Bionic chip, while the S22 Ultra has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Now, in terms of RAM, the iPhone is still, unfortunately, with only six gigs of faster LP DDR5 memory, while the S22 Ultra gets between eight and 12 gigs, depending on your storage, and this model actually has the 12 gigs, so double the RAM, and let's run this test. And would you look at that difference? Apple just keeps going further and further ahead. They're not letting anybody catch up. In terms of the single core, we're getting as much as 1873. That's 50% faster than the S22 Ultra. And for multi-core, 64% faster. I can't believe they have this big of a lead. And with that said, let's also run the graphics test with GFX Bench and the 1440p Aztec Ruins off screen. Now, while this is running, I also want to talk about dimming because Apple did say they improved the thermal system, but in our previous video comparing the 14 Pro Max with the 13 Pro Max, it still dimmed. Now, not as much, but it still did. Whereas the S22 Ultra, it does an excellent job keeping the display at the brightness that you set it to in terms of gaming and other tasks. And while we wait for the results, I do want to mention a couple of other spec differences. The iPhone has the new Bluetooth 5.3 compared to 5.2 on the Samsung, and the water resistance is four times better because it has IP68 at up to six meters compared to only 1.5 on the Samsung. And there you go, we have our results, and it looks like the iPhone gets 34% more FPS than the S22 Ultra. And now let's talk about the camera differences. The iPhone has a new 12 megapixel camera on the front compared to 40 on the S22 Ultra. And then on the back, they're very similar, except that the Samsung has a physical 10X optical zoom lens, which the iPhone doesn't because it's limited to 3X, and it has 108 megapixels for the main compared to the brand new 4 48 megapixel main on the iPhone. Now we're gonna be taking these phones over the weekend and taking a bunch of shots. I'm gonna put them together and I'm gonna have Max and Angelica look at them blind, not knowing which photo was taken with which phone. And I'm also gonna use the Z Fold 4. So that is gonna be a must watch if you're interested in the camera differences. And now with all that said and compared, let's get to my final conclusion. Now the iPhone has a lot of upgrades and advantages that we now have over the S22 Ultra that I really love, especially that peak brightness and the speaker difference, and of course the performance, but the S22 Ultra also has some ways that it still beats out the iPhone, and it's nice that you can get it for quite a bit cheaper than the iPhone. But the final verdict that is gonna leave it up to which one wins is gonna be that unbiased camera comparison. So if you're interested, definitely subscribe by clicking the circle above so you don't miss out on that video, and watch or other videos right over there, including the 14 Pro Max versus 13 Pro Max comparison. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.